hello friends welcome to my channel so in this video uh, we will be learning the need of regularization uh, so which help model to perform well on unseen data while identifying necessary underlying patterns in it uh, so we did this uh, we we can do this by adding a penalty term uh, to the cost function uh, so also we will discuss the methods uh, ridge and lasso regression which both allow some bias to get the significant decrease in the variance uh, and also we will see the trade off between the bias and the variance uh, and also uh, in the in the loss of learn like some of the coefficient become exactly zero and resulting in the model selection as well so this is a very important video to understand the whole concept of regularization because overfitting is a very very common problem in the machine learning and how we can solve this problem using regularization. So we'll go in detail about both of the techniques that can be used. And in the future videos, we will be going through the Python implementation for this also. So I, I was trying to make this video only specific to the concept. And in the next video, we'll go and perform the Python implementation for this. But in order to go to the Python implementation, it, I will recommend go this video. So to understand the baseline concept. Uh, so let's get started. So let's start this video by learning regularization because that is the key concept in this whole video. Uh, so basically when a model performs really well on the training data, uh, but does not perform well on the test data. So that is the unseen data. So that is called the overfitting. It's a very common problem in the machine learning models. So such model will perform very well with the training data and hence they have a very low bias uh, but since it does not perform well on the unseen data, that is the test data, it shows a very high variance. So let's understand this using this figure. Uh, the X axis represents here the model complexity and the Y axis uh, represents the error. So if we see uh, the left side, so the bias in the model is high. So that means when it does not perform well on the training data. So that is called the underfit. The model is underfit to to identify the patterns in the data and when the variance is high so that means the the right side basically that explains the model does not perform well on the test data that is the unseen data so that the, the, that model is called overfitting so that means the model actually memorized the data but when it is actually experimented on the unseen data it does not perform well so the model becomes very complex. So that is called exactly the overfitting. But when the model doesn't perform well on the training data, uh, when the bias is very high, so then it's called the underfit. So uh, please note that the model is failing to fit on the test data means the model result on the test data varies a lot as the training data changes. So this may be because the model coefficient does not have a very high reliability. So if you see in the middle, there is a trade off between bias and the variance with respect to the model complexity. So a simple model would usually have a high bias and a low variance, whereas a complex model will have a low bias and a high variance. In either case, the total error will be very high. So what we uh, we need is the low. So what we need to do is bring down the total error. So that is low bias, low variance. So such that the model identifies all the pattern uh, that it does, it should and also it perform well on the unseen data. So that is the best use case, uh, best scenario. So for this, we need to manage the model complexity. So it shouldn't, uh, it should neither be too high, uh, which would lead to overfitting, nor too low, which would lead to model with a high base, a uh, high bias. Uh, so that doesn't even identify the necessary patterns in the data. So, uh, so basically this problem can be solved using the regularization. So regularization in short, help managing the model complexity by essentially shrinking the model coefficient, uh, estimate to zero uh, that we will see uh, soon. So this discourages the model from becoming too complex and thus avoiding the risk of overfitting. Uh, so in case of overfitting, we know that we need to manage the model complexity by primarily taking care of magnitudes of the coefficient. So the more extreme values of coefficient are high positive or high negative values of the coefficient, the, the more 
complex the model is and hence higher chances of overfitting. So when we use the regularization, we add a penalty term to the model uh, cost function. So if you will see the cost function is RSS plus the penalty. So that's what we added, add a penalty term in the RSS. So adding this penalty term uh, in the cost function helps to suppress or shrink the magnitude of the model coefficient towards zero. Uh, so this discourages the creation of more complex model, thereby preventing the risk of overfitting. Uh, so uh, when we add the penalty term, so what happens is uh, it tried to get the model parameter that uh, optimize this updated cost function. So the coefficient that we get given the training data may not be the best, uh, may be more wise. Although with this minor compromise in the term of pies, uh, the variance of the model see a mark uh, like a tremendous reduction. So essentially with the regularization, we compromise by allowing a little bias with the significant gain is the variance. So that is if you see on the right side, uh, there is a significant drop in the variance and the bias has also reduced a little bit. So that's we try to reach the, uh, the middle ground. Uh, so to summarize, we use regularization because we want to we want our model to work well with the unseen data without missing out the identifying patterns in the data. So for this, we will we will be willing to make a compromise by allowing a little bias for a significant reduction in the variance. Uh, so we also uh, understand that the more extreme the values of model coefficient are, higher the chances of model overfitting. So regularization prevent that by shrinking the coefficient towards zero. Uh, so let's understand uh, now the types of regularization available. Uh, so let's start with the first regularization technique uh, called the ridge regularization. Uh, so in the ordinary least square, uh, so we get the best coefficient by minimizing the residual sum of square. So RSS. So basically. Uh, the residual sum of square is the predicted value uh, or the actual value minus the predicted value and we square that so that called the residual sum of square so similarly in the rich regression also we estimate the model coefficient by minimizing a different cost function so uh, this cost function uh, what we do here is we add a penalty term to the rss so if you look at the formula what we are doing here is we are summing up all the residual sum of squares plus uh, we add this penalty term and uh, this penalty term is a lambda multiplied by sum of squared model coefficient so in the cost function the penalty term also called the shrinkage penalty uh, and would be small only if the coefficients are small so that is close to zero so hence while fitting the ridge regression models since we need to find the model coefficient that minimize the entire cost the rss and the penalty so it would have the effect of shrinking the model coefficient that is beta towards zero so now let's understand the role of lambda also here so if you look at it like if the lambda is zero then the cost function would not contain the penalty term and there would be no shrinkage in the model coefficient so they would be same as the ordinary least square. However, since the lambda moves towards the higher value, then the shrinkage penalty increases and uh, pushing the coefficient uh, further towards zero uh, because anyways, we need to reduce the cost. So which may lead the model underfitting. Uh, so, and, uh, so choosing an appropriate lambda becomes very crucial and that is one of the hyperparameter. Uh, so if it is too small, then we would not be able to solve the problem of overfitting and if it is too large then we may actually have end up having an under uh, underfitting model so we we try to run the model based on different lambda values and also in this reg rich regularization uh, we get different uh, coefficients based on different uh, lambda values so that's not the case of OLS so now let's look at uh, another regularization technique called lasso uh, so the problem with the ridge regression is that it retains all the variables that are present in the data so now when the number of variables is very large uh, the data may have unrelated or noisy variables which may not be uh, which we may not to keep such variables in the model uh, but lasso regression helps us by performing feature selection as well so that is very very important advantage of lasso regression so the primary difference when we look at the formula is 
the penalty term. The penalty term here in the uh, lasso is the sum of absolute square, absolute values of all the coefficient present in the model. Uh, so uh, as the rich regression, lasso regression shrinks the coefficient estimates towards the zero. However, there is one difference is with lasso, the penalty term pushes sum of the coefficient estimate to exactly zero, uh, provided the tuning parameter lambda is large enough. Uh, so when the lambda is, lambda is huge, like very large, uh, maybe uh, 100 or thousands, then the, the coefficient becomes zero. Uh, so hence, lasso performs feature selection and choosing an appropriate lambda is very, very critical here. Uh, so friends, I hope now you got a good idea about regularization. The, you, you, your concept should be now pretty clear that how regularization is helpful in uh, reducing the uh, overfitting in the machine learning model. Uh, so now in the next video, we will be going through a very interesting machine learning project, the car price prediction. So in that video, we will be comparing the linear ridge and lasso regression. Uh, uh, and we'll do the actual Python implementation with the complete end-to-end -end project with the source code. Uh, so I'll be uploading that video pretty soon. Uh, so I hope you like this video and uh, uh, please subscribe to this channel. So it gives me a, a indication and motivates me also that I keep on making these videos. And if you have uh, any questions, so please leave the questions in the comment section and uh, don't forget to like this video. Thanks for watching.